40 years of the guiding light. Channel 10 News at 11 tonight. Time special celebrating 40 years of the best in daytime drama. It's absolutely incomprehensible to me how someone can do this for 40 years. We are more real to a lot of people than, uh, say, a campaign speaker who would come through town. I have some of the very best memories of my life from that show. And if I had to be honest, were I not doing Y and R? Oh, God, I would love to do Guiding Light. I, I would say that it was really training for anything, for any aspect of, uh, of the uh, acting profession. I would sneak away and get to the TV and watch Guiding Light for an hour. So I was really cutting into my study time. Guiding Light was the beginning, really. I mean, it was the beginning of not having to do anything else other than act. When you guys clock 100 years, I think I'd like to come back on the show as an old man, maybe be uh, chased by a jealous husband. Yeah. It's comforting and heartening to find something actually older than I am that's still alive. And I think it's really time that uh, we sing their praises. Uh, it's a tough, tough gig, daytime television. I, I, I feel that these, these dramas have a great role to play. So much of what we that sinks into our consciousness and into the, the truths of us come from what we see on television. I had the most fun in bed with Billy. I had the best love with Joshua. And I had the most fun with HB. That's safe, isn't it? Guiding Light, the primetime special, with appearances by friends and alumni of Guiding Light, Grant Alexander, William J. Bell, Eric Brayton, David Canary, Jeannie Cooper, Ruby D, Dana Elkar, Eileen Fulton, Marianne Hartley, Douglas Martland, John McCook, Agnes Nixon, Arthur Peterson, Mary Lou Retton, John Wesley Schiff, Erica Slazak, Ruth Warren, Billy D. Williams, Ian Zeering, Kim Zimmer, and hosted by some of your favorite cast members from Guiding Light. Ladies and gentlemen, Beth Ellers and Mark Derwin, better known as Harley Cooper and A.C. Mallet. Good evening. We are here tonight backstage in our studios to celebrate the longest running show in broadcast history, Guiding Light. When it started as a 15-minute radio drama, no one knew that 55 years later, it would become the prototype for what's now recognized as a unique American genre. And after 40 years in television, it is still the forerunner in daytime drama. Hundreds of writers, actors, and directors now prominent in all forms of entertainment began their careers in daytime dramas. Some of them are joining us tonight to help us celebrate this milestone. And over the years, our fans have witnessed the entire gamut of human emotion and events. Of course, the central emotion has always been love. And lots of romance. And nobody does romance better than daytime. Oh, is this romance? Oh, I feel the panic. Oh. Oh. Welcome to our love nest, Piglet. Peggy, my husband has a very busy afternoon schedule. Yeah. He doesn't want to be interrupted. Hold all his calls.
look at them and go, God, that was really beautifully done, and, and, and how gently he touched her face, or how lovingly he laid her on the bed. It's like, and when we're thinking, okay, well, it just, I don't have my balance. I gotta put my knee on the bed so that I don't fall out of shot all of a sudden, or, you know, I'm, as I'm backing up, please don't let me fall over a chair or catch something in the rug. Or... As my grandmother would say, you know, no sheet scenes when I first got on the show, and unfortunately I had to do a couple of those sheet scenes, but she still loves me. And we do have, like, pants on underneath, and, you know, very safe. Have you ever wondered what goes into the making of a soap opera? Or how many weddings there have been on Guiding Light? You'll find out next. I'm Vince Williams. And I'm Amelia Marshall. And our characters are the newest newlyweds on the block. Everybody loves a wedding. Mm -hmm. They're lush, lavish productions that the audiences just can't get enough of. And on The Guiding Light, our characters get married over and over and over. So there's always another wedding just around the corner. I can't believe I'm actually getting married today. <laughs> You know, man, you are marrying one of the best women in the whole world. I swear, I don't know what she, she sees in you. Oh, oh, thank you, old great friend of mine. Do you know how many times this old blue suit has attended weddings? Seven. No. Should bring, bring good luck. Yeah. Father. Yes? Just occurred to me. You're giving me away. Why do they call it that? this woman to be married to this man? I do. You are right in this. Ross, do you take this woman to heaven to hold from this day forth as your lawful wedded wife? I do. Do you, Margaret, take this man, Roger, to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Lisa has been known never to run away from a good fight. And some, oh, some silly people say that I've started the fight. Well, that's not true. Well, maybe I have started a few. But anyway, there's one fight I cannot take credit for. And that's this infamous cat fight between Nola and Vanessa. You have never seen such fur fly. You cow. Where did you get that dress? You take it off. No, you take your dress off. I'm going out there like two-thirds of the Andrews sisters. You've got another thing coming. You take that dress off now. It's my engagement party, Vanessa. You take the dress off. Well, fine. You just do whatever you want. But I'm getting out there first, and it's going to be my entrance. There! 
everybody could come backstage uh, and see what we do because they, they're seeing such a serious side to all of us. Personally, I'd like to get in at 6.30 for a, a 7 o'clock call just so I can get my coffee and get things in gear and uh, review what's coming up. And then you're, you're dropped right into rehearsal hall, which is a big empty room with uh, your fellow actors and the director. They're giving you your blocking and things and then giving it to you rather rapidly. And you get a chance to get the blocking, run through it once, not necessarily for your benefit, but to find out how long the scene is going to take. I really don't want to think of it. Let's say I went along so I might be around when Slim let something slip. You'll get a cue to where you, you turn the, uh, 90 degrees. Love you guys. <laughs> and uh, then you get shoveled right into makeup. What are you doing? <laughs> makeup and hair doesn't always take too long unless I've really had a bad night the night before. Um, no, actually, makeup and hair, um, I would say, each take about a half hour piece. So rehearsals have to occur catch as catch can. You're in the makeup chair, there happens to be someone you're doing a scene with, in the next makeup chair, you run the lines. You run through it, and mentally you're running through uh, where, where you're blocking, where you're supposed to be on the set. And everyone else is done with their test, and you're sizzling. Okay. Right, they're saying pencils down, and Melina's still like filling in her <laughs> So after you get out of makeup, you meet the lovely wardrobe people. It's much like being in the service. They tell you what to wear, where to go. And so you're all made up, you're looking pretty in some nice clothes, and it's time to tape. And uh, you have a, uh, once you're on the floor, you have a camera blocking, so the cameramen know what's going on. In five, four, three, two, one, cue action, Russ and Holly. And you immediately go into a dress rehearsal followed by about five minutes of notes, usually delivered like a Western Union telegram. Go here, do this, do it faster, do it better, do it funnier, and do it more downright. You don't have to be, when Grady's on the phone, you don't have to be so sweet. And then they go back into the booth, and boom, you're on, you're taping it. One. But the whole deal is fighting the clock, and that defines what we do. And there is no rehearsal time, and that's a fact of life. Got to deal with it. Why are the villains of soap opera so popular? That answer, and a look at the beginnings of Guiding Light when we return. This is Harley. This is the cop who shares her bed. And this is the thief whose treachery can tear them apart. If you want to see where treachery leads, quick, turn on the light. Guiding Light. Weekdays on CBS. You're hiding something, aren't you? <laughs> no, no. Just being scrupulous. It comes with the territory. Spoken like a true Thorpe. It's like manipulating runs in your family. Not just in my family. Daytime drama is loaded with manipulators, connivers, con men, con women, scam artists. The villain or the villainess of any piece has more fun for one's own reason. They meet more people, and they get to do rotten things that appeal to all of us. Fundamentally, bad guys are great fun to play and hopefully they're great fun to watch for sort of the same reasons when you're playing a villain i guess you get some of those those things out it's easier to play a villain uh, particularly in daytime because villains know exactly what they want they know what they're willing to do to get it and they're the schemers and they're the plot movers so you're active ah, now i understand why you villains are so well liked because life would be so boring without them vanity hate to admit that the strings I pull can tangle even slightly. 
You love him, don't you? Admit it. I don't want to talk about it. You love Ross Marler. Yes! When I'm through with Ross Marler, there won't be anything left to love. If you're not comfortable working with her, then I would be happy to give your account my personal attention. I'll bet you would. The thing that people really love about villains is that they want to really see how far they're going to go. They'll tune in to say, OK, well, he did this really awful, terrible thing, and let's just see if he can do something a little bit more the next day. Whatever their motives, nine times out of 10, the refrain is always the same. Everything that I did was because I loved you. I did this for you. This is for Annie. And if the deed isn't done for love, it's done for greed. You tell me something. Does the rich boy sweat? I think they do. It makes me feel real good seeing you sweat. Because now I'm the one with the power. The blue or the blood? <gasps> The icier the vein. The game's not over till the rich lady swings. And in my family, those veins are frozen. I don't know what I'm thinking. You're not to pull this trigger right now. I'll pay you back. My adoring parents. If I get out of this, I'll kill you for this. Revenge becomes them. I think that Blake has so much to overcome from having Roger as the father that she needs some real guidance. You take my men, mother. I think I'll take yours. Now tell me, what are you really up to? Usually the villain has a lot of power and a lot of control, or at least for a certain length of time. And one interesting, I, it's very much more fun to play. A lot of men would be very pleased to be alone with me in a hotel room. I'm pleased. your problem. And just when you think we've gotten our comeuppance, it's divine retribution. We're back from the dead. Again. Again. And yet again. Alexandra Spaulding, proof positive that blood is thinner than water. When you're making a list of your enemies, your dear sister belongs right at the top of the list. I can't believe you hated me all these years. I concentrated on revenge. I have tapes. I tap the phones. What is it you want? I want you to sign over all of your holdings. Everything. Liars and lovers. Sinners who once were saints. And as the old saying goes, when we're good, we're very, very good. But when we're bad, we're even better. Well, you know, in daytime, the old axiom really holds true that you cannot keep a bad man down. Every soul fan looks forward to that one moment, usually on Friday, that leaves them sitting on the edge of their seats, wondering what is going to happen next. It keeps us tuned in week after week, year after year. Kind of like what happened to you today. Yes. Sorry, but that's it, Cooper. It's over. Okay. I can see that there's only one way to convince you of this. told you that, Vincent, it wouldn't be a cliffhanger. Now, wait a minute. I'm a fellow colleague. Of course you can tell me. Don't worry. Monday isn't very far away. Now, wait a minute, Fiona. You gotta tell me what happened. Hello, I'm Ruby D. The true guiding light of this daytime drama was the late, beloved Sherita Bauer, who played Bert 
for 34 years. When I appeared on the show as Martha Frazier in 1967, I saw for myself the qualities of strength and nobility that served Sharita so well in playing Bert. It was the perfect marriage of an actress with a character. He turns his back on you and turns to another woman. Treats you like you have never should have been treated. And instead of you blaming him for breaking up the home, you blame me for breaking it up. You think you're holier than he is. Well, I just hope that when you're his age, you're half the man your father is. Because he's a big man. And you're small. You can stand there and tell me that my father's a big man. You'll never be fit to shine his boots. Thank you, Sharita. You will never be forgotten. And now, The Guiding Lights, created by Erna Phillips. Erna Phillips was the originator of The Guiding Light. But Erna Phillips was much more than that. Erna Phillips was really the originator of soap opera, of the daytime serial. For a while, they had both got, they had Guiding Light, both radio and, and, te and television, because that's when I first started writing. I would write the script, and er Erna would outline it. I'd write it and then write narration, where, I, where the pictures were doing the work for video. And uh, so that's Erna. It's because of Erna that this, we went to television. And then all the others came along. And, uh, and so, and then there were good people doing it after her. But she was the pioneer. Erna Phillips had one characteristic that was a little difficult for actors and actresses. She wanted us to be both off and on screen, on television, the character that she'd written. She didn't like interviews. She didn't like publicity. In fact, we were right in the dungeon as far as publicity was concerned because she wanted the people to really believe we were who we were. Guiding Light is my reason for being. Uh, I wouldn't be in television today if it hadn't been for Erna Phillips in, in her offering me this job in Guiding Light. There wouldn't be any guiding, there wouldn't be any uh, Young and Restless, there wouldn't be any Bold and Beautiful, there wouldn't be any Another World that she and I did together. These shows would not exist. It was a very monumental day for me and I guess for a lot of people that day that I joined her. But she really was the mother of us all. I think Guiding Light was her favorite show. If you, any of you as old as I listened to it as children, remember that there was a, there was a Dr. Rutledge who was a minister on the show, and he used to say, quote, the Edwin, Edwin Markheim quatrain. And if I have the lines correctly in my mind, they are, there is a destiny that makes us brothers. None goes his way alone. All that we send into the lives of others comes back into our own. Your ideal leading man and woman, things your favorite characters have said but wish they hadn't, and the return of Rita Shane when Guiding Light, the primetime special, continues. Characters in daytime drama have experienced love, loyalty, revenge, betrayal, lust, passion. Ooh. So it's no wonder that so many of them respond with comments that are, shall we say, universal. So universal that no show could live without them. On Guiding Light, we have said everything from we need to talk to oh my god, we're trapped. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. She needs a good talking to. You and I need to talk. You're all talk. The whole town is talking about it. Will you people shut up? I'm trying to get some sleep. I knew it would be like this. What little game are you playing now? We need to talk. Darling, I have wonderful news. Your secret is safe with me. Don't worry. They'll never find out about it. 
You're not going to believe what I just heard. I don't know how to tell you this, but... That's not my baby. That's not my baby. That's not my baby. That's not my baby. It's not my baby. I don't care what the tests say. The baby is not mine. Well, then whose baby is it? Honey, you won't believe what's on our doorstep. You've got a lot of nerve showing your face around here. You mean you weren't killed in the avalanche? In the explosion? In the cave-in? In the uprising? In the train wreck? In the tornado? What does it take to kill you anyway? Oh, you'll live all right. Live to regret it. It doesn't look good. Please, you've got to hang on for me. We're going to have to operate. It's out of our hands now. Which way is the chapel? They did everything humanly possible. All right, we'll get another cat. I think it's for the best. What are you all doing here? I'm your mother. I have a right to be there. I'm your brother. I have a right. I'm your husband. I have a right to be there. I'm your twin sister. I have a right to be there. I'm your ex-husband. I have a right to be there. I'm your widow. I have a right to be there. How do you get there? We need to talk. Oh, my God. We're trapped. We're trapped. 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 We're trapped. Trapped. Let's not panic. Let's talk about it. I am tired of talking about it. I think what we all need is a good night's sleep. I spent a delightful year on Guiding Light playing the role of Janet Johnson, a nurse in the life of a young intern on the show. And people say, now, who is she? Well, her real identity was simply to be a problem for this young man. And the problem of identity comes up often in soap operas. We're going to look now at Philip Spaulding. And when he confronted the man he thought was his father and came across this shattering truth. Did you know I was his when I was born? Huh? No. no. But I decided to love you as my own son. Oh. Gee, thanks. You decided. What about you? You decide not to love me? I didn't know you were my son until you were ten years old. Oh, yeah? I would have told you then, Philip, but you were very ill. Tell me this. I recovered a long time ago. Some reason you haven't told me since? We were going to tell you tomorrow. <laughs> That's amusing. Yeah, I bet you were going to tell me tomorrow. Or the next day, maybe. Or the day after that. Or maybe the week after. Or the year after. Maybe never. Philip, we were going to tell you. Yeah, somebody got there first, didn't they? Isn't that a shame? Son, forgive me. <laughs> Don't you ever call me that? Because you're not my father. No father would ever do this to his son. Never. One of the neatest things happened when we were actually taping that scene. Um, we were sitting on the steps of the country club. That's where we had ended uh, one scene. The pickup was, was right there. And throughout the entire five, uh, Chris sat on my one side and Tom sat on the other. And we really didn't say anything. They just kind of sat there with me, knowing that I was, you know, very young and, you know, very nervous. And without ever saying a word, really just sat there because they knew it would keep me where I felt like I needed to be and, and really support me. And those, those are things that, uh, those are the memories that I have of Guiding Light that are just, you know, fantastic. <laughs> no, okay, if you gentlemen had to pick the definitive Guiding Light leading lady, who would she be? Oh, oh, come on, that's not fair now. Why not? Uh, yeah, really, well, it'd be like picking out your favorite from uh, a box of chocolates. Oh, oh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Are you comparing the women on this show to a box of candy? Uh, no, no, no. Frank was using a figure of speech, a metaphor, an analogy. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Our leading ladies cover every aspect of the multifaceted qualities of femininity. Yeah. How am I doing, Frank? You think I'm losing? Uh, Jordan, you're on a roll. Keep okay. going, buddy. And just what aspects of femininity do we cover? In 25 words or less. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see. I think that she would have the cool sensualities of Vanessa. <laughs> the heart.
haunting beauty of Holly. <laughs> the fire of Eleni. You have to have the aloof uh, determination of Alexandra and uh, fresh vibrancy of Mindy. The darker but awfully striking good looks of that evil gumdrop Blake. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Julie's affectionate charm. And uh, what about the trusting, nurturing Marine? And don't forget about the greasy, daredevil quality of Harley. Well, uh, wait a minute now. Um, we can't forget Reva. Hot, sexy, gorgeous, beautiful, outrageous, nonstop, sexy, idea. hot, flying. Next. <laughs> How about the devoted and courageous Lillian? And do you remember Nola's unpredictable romanticism? And the earthy, vulnerable Nadine? Ah, but the mysterious adventurous Eve and Jenna's aristocratic classic beauty and, of course, the queen of all of our leading ladies, the unforgettable Bert Bauer. So, ladies, what do you um, think of our perfect leading lady? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she's got a bad case of split personality. Oh, I mean, my goodness, oh, you put everybody up there. Well, but hold on here. That's just the point, though. Guiding light as a leading lady for everybody. All right. But now it's our turn, and we took a slightly different approach. Yeah, let's get on with it. The guiding light leading man should be an upstanding leader of the community, like H.B. Lewis. Boy, he's got to have the debonair sophistication of Roger Thorpe. Hmm, what about the rugged, indestructible A.C. Mallet? And then there's Alan Spaulding, so formal and dignified. I'll never forget the sculptured good looks of the dashing Philip Baldwin. The thoughtful, romantic Fletcher Reed. And I like the subtle inner strength of Hampton Speaks. <laughs> and don't you just love the sensitive, tender Frank Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> and we can't forget Nick McHenry. That romantic daredevil. <laughs> And last yet hardly least, the strapping yet oh so cuddly, Billy Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. oh, Very funny, ladies. You know, this is hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, come on. We're just trying to make the point that whatever else you men are, <laughs> you're also vulnerable. <laughs> Uh, and good yeah. sport. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Reva Shane, one of Guiding Light's favorites, returns with a never-seen moment, and we look at how Guiding Light tackles the most controversial issues of the day. This is Jilly. This is the man she loves. And this is her brother, whose secret could destroy them all. If you want to see where secrets lead, quick. Turn on the light. Guiding Light. Weekdays on CBS. Reva had a wonderful time with several of the leading men on Guiding Light. But she paid the price. She died when she drove her car into the ocean. They had a eulogy for Reva, but a lot of people didn't get to see it because for some unknown reason, the show was preempted that day. I mean, I've never even gotten to see it. So now, I have the unique pleasure of getting to hear what the Springfield crowd really had to say about me. I mean, Reva. Lord, she was loud. Stayed loud all her life. You just can't imagine some people leaving this world once they've touched your life. And how Reva touched ours. Reva caught the eye of both my sons. And later mine. Man, oh man. That set the tongues a-wagging. <laughs> I loved Reva. She loved me. But she loved Joshua more. Oh, how, how she loved Joshua. They wrote the book on loving, tore it up, then wrote it again. But love, like Reva's, never dies. We're gonna miss you. Something awful. Wasn't she great? <sighs> to all my friends at Guiding Light, I miss you too. Can, um, can, can we run that eulogy just one more time? Thanks. 
daytime drama uh, tackles these social issues uh, for the simple reason that they are very important in, in our lives and they reflect society the way it is today. Most social issues handled on daytime are superior, in my opinion, to prime time. One, we have the time to do it. We can spread it out over a period of time. And then we will usually have that social problem afflict someone that that audience loves. We have this vast audience. We have a forum. Perhaps we have a responsibility as well, which I really felt very strongly. Daytime drama has never been afraid to tackle the serious issues that confront us. Difficult problems that viewers struggled with in their lives often found expression on the afternoon serials. As times changed and grew more complex, Guiding Light remained true to its name and always led the way. There is no subject that the writers are afraid to tackle, and the results are amazing. We don't always cure the problem, but we do provide enlightenment and possible solutions. Now, in which breast did you feel the lump? Oh, my right. Very good to examine yourself so carefully. A lot of women don't know that it makes a difference. Did you find something? Yes, you do have a lump in your right breast. That's why we're going to do a mammogram. Right from the beginning, guiding light has changed to the degree society has changed. And many of our storylines reflect the big picture in a smaller, much more personal way. I'm going to do the side view, okay? So I need you to put your hand up to the bar after you get it tilted. With the cooperation of the American Cancer Society, we were able to recreate through drama, in detail, the emotional roller coaster so many women fight. Whenever you're dealing with a, a social right, issue breathe. or a medical don't issue, in daytime today, you had better do your research very carefully because, you know, we have doctors, nurses, all of those people in our audience, and they're very quick to let you know when you've made a mistake. And it's part of the responsibility of telling those stories, I think. I started doing research about what form of cancer was curable, 100% curable, if caught in time, and that's uterine cancer, which is detected through the pap smear test. The pap test. Yes. In the first place, it was something about which I knew nothing, and which subsequently made a great deal in helping me in my life, and it certainly meant a lot to a great many women who didn't know about the test, and it saved a lot of lives, literally. When do you go to the hospital? Oh, tomorrow or the next day. They'll let me know when a room is available. Dad said you might have to have surgery. Well, if the examination indicates surgery, I'll just stay on. Makes sense. Dad said it wouldn't be serious. Oh, no, of course not. It'll be kind of a vacation from this kitchen. A lot of suspense, a lot of romance, but it was instigated by the fact that Bert had to have this surgery. And she went to her doctor not having been in 12 years. I mean, women classically didn't go back to their doctor after the birth of the last baby, the gynecologist. And so, so we took Bert. Bert was the typical ostrich female of America in the early 50s. As women began to take control of their lives, so did the characters on many of the daytime dramas. I've taken care of the pregnancy. What do you mean you've taken care of? I mean I had an abortion. What do you mean you've had an abortion? What were you thinking about? How dare you? Oh, how dare I? I'm going to bed. I wanted that child. Well, you wanted that child. You don't deserve that child. You don't deserve to be a father. And as women took control of their lives, they began to change their outlooks and their priorities. If you didn't want the baby in the first place, then why'd you even have it? I did want... You wanted our baby? No, I... I didn't know what to do, and I just waited. For me. You no. were waiting for me. No, I didn't. I just waited too long. Because you wanted our baby. No, I would have been crazy to want her, Dylan. How would we have taken care of her? I think that Harley is very emotional and she is never going to be able to forget that she had that baby. Uh, some people, people are different. Some people um, can live with it and they, they feel good about it. They feel like, yeah, this person is raising her in a way that I never could. But I think a uh, part of your heart must forever hold on to that child. I think if she was older, she might make another decision. Almost from the start, our show has probed the problems of drug and alcohol addiction. How many pills do you take a day? 
Well, I haven't taken any recently. Each story has traced the character's weaknesses. Last week? Well, not so many. Um, eight a day, or maybe twelve. I and develop their strengths through guidance and rehabilitation. Why did you take so many? I needed something in the morning just to get me through to lunch. And then I needed something to get me through to dinner. And then so that I could sleep. I'm scared that I'm going to fail. That I'm not going to be a good wife or a good mother. But I just get so frightened. I don't recognize myself. Vanessa, it's okay. We all get scared sometimes. It's not okay, because when I get scared, I take pills. I remember we did, uh, uh, early on when I was on, uh, we did a uh, alcoholism story where Kevin Bacon came on and was playing the, uh, the troubled youth, and my character was a friend of his, and, um, and dealt with those issues, issues in very responsible ways. I'm not hooked on alcohol. I could stop tomorrow if I wanted to. You know, Tim, when I walked in here this morning and saw you passed out, it brought back so many memories. Of course, most mornings I, uh, I didn't even realize that it was morning because I was still so drunk from the night before that I couldn't remember where I'd been or what I'd done. I'm not hooked on the stuff. But you are developing a pattern of turning to the bottle every time that you can't handle the situation. Come on, say it, Tim. I have a problem. And I need help with it. In 1979, Guiding Light first dealt with the crime of marital rape. At that time, Holly, the character I play, faced a double trauma. The rapist was her husband, Roger Thorpe. Roger hurt me. Tell me, tell me everything. I've never seen him like that. No, I'm not going to leave you alone. He wanted me and he hated me at the same time. And he, he raped me. Today, Guiding Light is addressing the issues of sexual harassment in and out of the workplace. What do you mean you were almost raped? I, I mean, that just, just because I'm a woman and I succeed in the world of business, which is a man's world, that somehow I've got to succeed by being a little seductive? Vanessa. No, it's okay. It's all right for you guys. You can schmooze and turn on the good old boy charm, and that's the way you can win your clients. But if a woman wants to compete, what does she do? Tries to be interesting, tries to be good company. And what happens? She's an easy mark. She's no good. I didn't Look, say that. I work hard. I work very hard, and when I come in that door at night, it's not over because I've got my little boy, I've got my father to look after, and it's so damn unfair for you men to assume that just because hey, I Just tell me one thing, was it Pierce Daly? But, uh, right, no, I can really say that I deserved it. Hey, hey, hey. Darling, I don't want anything bad to happen to you at all. At all. Hey, hey, hey. When there's a serious issue like that that you're confronting <clears throat> on daytime television where we perforce have to do everything very quickly and it gives you a real sense of responsibility and it makes you feel there are people out there who who've been whose lives have been touched ruined affected by this you don't want to mess up you don't want to do it superficially you don't want to do it lightly you want to do the best you can we can deal with material at much far greater depth than almost any other medium alive uh, possibly the Encyclopedia Britannica and uh, that's another reason for, for, for doing it on soap opera. We have that wonderful luxury of the time to truly tell an issue story. And all the aftermath, because the aftermath and the healing process is as important in the storytelling if you're going to reach people out there who want to believe there is a healing process. And in a movie, for instance, it would be over in five minutes, and that's not life. We can tell it in a much more realistic version because of the time we have. Guiding Light, the primetime special, will continue. Quiet, please. It's a Guiding Light, episode 11,421. That's how many episodes of Guiding Light have come your way since we started keeping track. We'd like to thank all of our loyal fans and our friends at Procter & Gamble for giving us this wonderful home away from home for so many years. 
We're proud to be part of such a historical show. Guiding Light has a rich past, an exciting present, and as for the future, we're going to be around for a long time. To all of you, good night from all of us. Good night. Travel provided by Continental. One airline can't make a difference. What's the difference? Max Saver fares, always an exceptional value in the air. That's the difference on Continental. The New York Marriott Marquis Hotel, located in the heart of the theater district and featuring The View, New York's only revolving rooftop restaurant and lounge. Monday for the sexy new comedy series Grapevine. Grapevine premiering Monday right after Murphy Brown. Now get ready for Secret Lives of Husbands and Wives next. That's a wrap -a uh, See you Monday morning, 7 a.m. Have a nice weekend, everybody. See you in rehearsal hall, 7 a.m. Monday morning. Sharp.